Okay. So, back to the grind. We are moving into, um... Well, we're moving further into the battle now, so... Melon versus Lego, see this chapter, probably? Oh, uh, actually, no. It looks like it, we're seeing the aftermath of what happened with Melon versus the Madara Gumi, so... Let's jump right into it. Uh, welcome to Beastar Chapter 181. The battle between the Shishigumi and the Madara Gumi was terrifyingly short. So this is what happened a few minutes earlier. Finally, we get to settle the score. Your spots are an eyesore as usual. Let's get this over with. Melon? What's up with Melon? Hey, Melon, wanna take a bath with Mama? Hmm. Chapter 181, Leopard Spots, like a floating oil slicks. Like floating oil slicks, okay. Uh, the memories of his mother etched into his mind. Ah, oh, man. How's this chapter gonna traumatize me this time? Let's see. So, it's weird we okay so we're gonna get we're gonna get more memories of melon and his mom who we know melon already killed i'm just wondering what they're gonna do okay leopard spots ah leave it to us boss the madaragumi and shishigumi go way back to be honest, battles between leopards and lions aren't very fair, because... Why is that? I'm the youngest, so I'll go first. Whoosh. What's happening? Is it the spots that are moving? Dolph, it's been a while since we last fought one-on-one -on -one like this. A leopard's extreme physical ability extends to their fur as well. The fur reacts to the nervous stimuli traveling from the brain to the muscles causing it to move. It'll pick up what, that apple on the table. I'll pick up that apple on the table. Oh, okay, I see what's happening. Their spots begin to flow in that direction. The spots lead the muscles' movements by a split second. So I'm guessing because cats have kinetic vision, they're able to pick up on this, which makes their fights unfair. Even if it's like a brief moment, a, something like a lion would be able to see that because they're a cat. Okay. All just in a tenth of a second, no, an instant. So it takes a feline with incredibly sharp eyes to use the movement of a leopard's fur to their advantage. Yet, the moderate Gumi are so proud of their fur that they wear kimonos to show off their patterns. As expected from the Shishigumi, you aren't just big bastards. So they just lose. Okay. I have to get it done quickly, Melon is acting strange today. Hey, Dolph. It's sad to see you, King of Beasts, sucking up to your new boss like this. Our King of Beasts title, your leopard fur patterns. We are both being dragged down by the pride of our species. Just headbutts him? <laughs> Melon's just quiet. All right, it's scary when Melon's quiet. That means he's thinking. <sighs> there he goes, thinking again. Melon, let's just keep them as prisoners. Uh-oh. There's no need in killing them now. Didn't you just want to fight Legacy? Shut up, I gotta. This guy's fur pattern is a real eyesore. Melon, let's take a bath together. Okay, so I guess we're about to go back to uh, flashback territory. Let's see. Uh, well. You can take a bath first. I'm just gonna watch TV. Hmm. Uh, you don't want to take a bath with Mama? Don't give me that look. When my mom's leopard hand touched my gazelle horn, 
it was not the way a mother touches her son. Her fingers reminded me of my gazelle dad. He disappeared without a trace and we never talked about it. Um. Okay, so this is... Oh man, I'm getting uncomfortable. I hope this chapter is like... I don't think it's gonna be. And let me note something. Let me go back. I like how... Okay, so even here, I like how they're portraying Melon's mom in a way that's kind of like realistic to like a human, right? <laughs> like, it would be so easy to just draw her like, you know, clothes off, she's fine, right? But no, look, she kind of has like a gut here. And it's not, it's not really like sexual in nature, right? It'd be easy to make her all fan service, see, you know, like, oh, Melon's mom, yeah. But no, she kind of has like a little gut hanging out, and I'd imagine her body would be just a little bit, I don't know, like loose skin or something like that. I don't know. Like she actually like had a kid, so. Yeah, I don't know, just one of those things. But I don't like this. I'm getting, <sighs> from this scene, I'm getting like molesty overtones, and look how Melon's like, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to take a bath with his mom. And there's a reason for that. Because, from what I understand, I'm trying to go into it with the open mind because, because I have a, a Western perspective of things. Like, a Western perspective of, like, bathing and stuff, right? And this was written with the Eastern perspective in mind, where... Uh, bathing is, I believe bathing is like typically like communal, right? And it's like bonding time for like, uh, you know, parent for like parents and like siblings and, you know, shit like that. So I'm not too like too, too familiar with the culture, but I'm just trying to keep in mind that, that perspective of things. So let's see. But how she's gripping his horns, though, I can't tell if that's sexual in nature or if that's maybe I don't, I don't know. It's hard to put myself in Melon's mom's like head space because it's really hard to tell what she's thinking because by by her nature, um, she she keeps things bottles up. But I don't know if she's like projecting onto Melon, like, you know, thinking of her gazelle lover like, because the question before was, yo, did she eat Melon's dad? That's, that's what, uh, I'm still on the fence about that. That's what everyone else was saying. But it's weird, because, uh, I don't know, man. Because I view this from the perspective of Melon, who's a child, right? And who's a kid. And it's easy to come to those conclusions and draw those conclusions on your own. You know, it's like, what's it called, uh... You know, just have that type of bias. But it never came from her mouth, though. So I just don't know. I just don't get the... The reason... <sighs> okay, so the reason why I think... I'm, I don't know. I'm still in the camp that maybe she... That, that's not what happened. Like, Beastars has a, has a way of subverting your expectations. And I'm just not feeling that what everyone's saying is that happened is what really happened. I just don't know what happened yet. And the reason for that is that I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt is because of the name she gave Melon and her wish for him to live a life as sweet as Melon's. That was the first and only real thing she told her son that wasn't like in the realm of fantasy. And that came from the heart. That's something I feel like was true which melon just flat out like rejected <laughs> which is which is weird because that's the first thing that wasn't like rooted in fantasy form his name origin so that's why i feel like that's why i feel like giving her the benefit of the doubt and being like okay maybe melon isn't 100 percent reliable here but that doesn't mean i'm discounting his experiences or everything that he's saying so we'll see because his trauma 
comes from somewhere, and it's most definitely has been with this woman, as we're seeing here. So we'll see. He doesn't like the way she touches him. It was not the way a mother touches her son. He disappeared without a trace and we never talked about it. Has Melanie actually seen his dad? I don't think he did. I'm trying to think back to earlier chapters. I don't think he did, no. Okay then. Okay then. I'm sad, but I'll take the bath alone. Hmm. Help me unhook my bra. My body is too big. My hands can't reach it. That's bullshit. Wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. Okay, so Melon doesn't want to bathe with his mom. And unhook mama's bra? Please, Melon. She doesn't need help with that. And why is that fr why is that freaking him out so much? Like mm, Okay, yeah. I uh I can't really ignore it because there are un there is subtlety that's going on here that's easy to like be like Uh, it's easy to want to ignore this, but there are undertones like with all this that you kind of, that you could just kind of like infer based on how Melon's acting. He's not comfortable at all, and there's there's a bit there's a reason for that. So he unhooks her bra. Let's see. So she, uh, okay. So she uses, it seems like, okay, so it seems like low key, she uses her son for pleasure in a way, it seems. Otherwise, why would it, look how, look how Melon responds to this. This, I feel like this has happened before and multiple times, right? Which is why he doesn't want to bathe with her. He's being touched inappropriately, right? And this is an orgasmic response. Look how her, how she, this is like sexual in nature. Look how she arches her back, right? How she smiles when he does it. And how she lets out that moan. That's sexual in nature, so that just puts in per into perspective why it would make Melon feel uncom uncomfortable, you know, being near his mother, like, during bath time or whatever. Because she did not need help with this at all. She just wanted him to do it, so that's, that's really sad. If that's what's happening here, like... I feel like that is what's happening here. She, she's, pro I feel like she's projecting onto Melon, right? Yeah, I don't know. It's just, I, I can't really like, I can't underwrite this because it's coming. F Melon's bringing it up because look at this, Shudder, right? This is something that had a profound effect on Melon. Right, which contributed, which I'm guessing has contributed to his hatred towards her. Right? You know, because even a child can recognize when something just isn't right. And I and I feel like th this is coming from a Western, not a Western, an Eastern standpoint of bathing and whatnot. But it this it's still presented as not being normal for what's going on here, right? This isn't normal. From here to here. Emphasis on her hands. And then here and then to this. It was like countless insects skittering up her back. In an instant, all of her spots rushed toward her neck. 
Wait, why her neck? I still haven't forgotten how that looked, even to this day. So that's why he, um, he froze when the, uh, Madara Gumi were, were here, so. Okay, I guess that was what it looked like to get goosebumps. The spots show not only Mupam, but also fear and excitement. You leopards are a disgusting species. What are you? His finger? Wait, what? Look at your spots. Look, your spots are crawling up just like mama's. Okay, so she was excited from him doing that, so. That's a, mm, that's a weird, hold on, that's a weird, that, I don't know, man, that's a weird fetish, I think. I'm not sure what to call it, though. I'm not really knowledgeable about that, so. <sighs> Melon's mom is just fucked, like, in the head, like, ugh. I'm trying to empathize, but they're making it extremely difficult to empathize with her. Because of what she did to Melon. Like, you're supposed to hate Melon, but at the same time... Like, you, I, I see what, what Paru's doing, or the author. You're like, yeah, you want, hate this guy, but maybe you can understand where he's coming from now. Okay, so... You know, I should have just ripped off her fur along with her underwear and put an end to her. Now I'm able to do so. Oh, wow. So he's just skinning this dude. Jeez. Uh, Melon gets... All right. So look. Melon gets more sadistic whenever he gets reminded of his mother, right? Like any other time, he's just doing it for fun or just for the lulls, right? But now, this is just being unnecessarily cruel. Tonight, I'll put it into all this drama. So we have Legosi. Now it's your turn. Evil has awakened. Yikes, okay. Well, that was something. Ah, uh, it's so weird. Melon makes me, uh the whiplash you get from reading these chapters, man, but yeah, I think pretty much I said everything I need to say so we're just gonna move on. I will see you during chapter 182. Look out for it and uh, bye.